My father's a World War II veteran, Iwo Jima, the, all those nasty island areas. And uh, he never wanted his kids to be military. He wanted us to go to college, which I did. You know, I, uh, I was a good ball player, you know, four sport athlete. Uh, but I walked onto the team at University of New Mexico to play baseball, made it. But I didn't have an athletic advisor and classes and practice and everything just got too hard. So after that second semester I was there, I just didn't want it anymore. So started partying and doing crazy stuff. And I wrecked my mom's car and my dad gave me the ultimatum. You know, straighten up or get the hell out of Dodge. So uh, I said, heck with him. I'll join the military. And I'll join the Marines just like him, like what he never wanted. So I, I signed up. Uh, when I told him that I'd signed up, he didn't talk to me for six months before I left to boot camp. And uh, I thought, well, I'll show him. And I was like, oh, what did I get into? But after that, it was like, yeah, it kind of bonded a little closer between us. But he'd, you know, check on me all the time, see if I was doing okay and stuff. When I was active duty Marines, I was deployed on a Westpac tour. We hit all the major islands from Japan, Philippines, Thailand, Australia. On my second tour, we did the same thing, but that was right around the time the Persian Gulf War started. And they uh, rerouted us from Australia to Mombasa, Kenya, Kenya into the Gulf. And then we just sat around and flew missions in and out, in and out. Desert Storm started and we were right there close to KKMC. Just, you know, flying, flying missions in and out, hauling the grunts in and out. And then uh, after that, I was like, well, I did one more year, finished my eight years in the Marine Corps, which was active duty, 84 and 92. 92, I got out and I joined the reserves. I was teaching at the time I had gotten my degree and I was teaching when they called me up. And it's funny, they, they said on a Wednesday, you gotta be at San Antonio today. I'm like, sorry, you can't do that. You need to send orders to my principal, my superintendent, you gotta let everybody know. They said, okay, you got till Friday. We'll send all the paperwork. So by Friday, I was saying my goodbyes, everything, and I was out. So called up on a Wednesday, gone by Friday. We had a couple of weeks, about a month training, and they flew us out. And on our first tour, it went up to as high as 160 degrees in the cab. You know, we're kind of trying to figure out ways to keep our water cool and stuff like that. So we get those big liters of bottles of water, get a sock, water, get water down the sock, put them on our windshields, and that will cool down the water. And after a while, the Iraqis, the, the people started seeing what we needed. So they started selling us coolers, ice, and all that. So we adapted. We adapted to their lifestyle, to their weather, and how they did business, you know. So it was, a, it was an early morning. We had a SP time of 7.30 in the morning. We were hauling back uh, 3rd Infantry Division equipment, all their armor, tanks, Bradleys, the howitzers. We were at Baghdad International Airport, and we had some rookies with us that I had in my lead truck and didn't know where to go. So my driver and I, we knew we knew it inside and out more or less by then. My leg was, I could feel something warm. I thought it was just sweat or water. So it, I just sat down on one of the tires and the guys were like, hey, are you okay? Are you okay? I sound fine, <clears throat> fine. Let's group together and then we'll figure out where to go. We were there for five days, treating our own wounds and stuff. My partner, not knowing at the time, but he, I guess because of the concussion and because of the explosion, he was bleeding internally. So when they finally evacuated us, they sent us to Kuwait. We stayed there for a couple of days and my unit sent us out to Germany where we were in Langstuhl for about two months. They found out he had something ruptured in his stomach, me, with my little, it was cosmetic, but Nonetheless, it was, you know, there was shrapnel inside my leg and my eardrum had been blown. There's, there's a lot of 
teaching lessons in the classroom and on the field and everything else. But before that, I tried not to take anything for granted. And then even after that, I even especially more, I don't take anything for granted. I appreciate everything a lot more.